Malaysia has made an ambitious commitment to reduce the intensity of its carbon emissions by 45 percent by 2030. Secretary General of the Ministry of Environment and Water, Kasa Dato Sri IR Dr. Zaini Ujang, said this requires a huge commitment, not only by the government, but from all sectors and consumers. How committed is Malaysia towards reducing carbon emissions and what are the obstacles to achieving the target? We, we have been uh, used to subsidy of utilities in the country. Uh, electricity, say for example, is subsidized heavily. Uh, uh, water, water supply, and these are uh, and uh, fuel to a certain extent. Um, so, and in order to to say for example to reduce uh, carbon emission mainly from energy sector, which is about seventy nine percent of the categories, includes um, transportation. Uh, transportation is about 21%. The rest are power generation. Uh, we have to uh, depart from the existing fossil fuel dependence. And this is not easy, this is not cheap. Malaysia, he said, wants to ramp up efforts to lessen its dependence on fossil fuel energy by increasing investment in green energy. We can have hydro, say, for example. Uh, the existing structure, we, we don't. Um, assuming we can can share uh, the capability or the capacity that we have in in various parts in the country, so and uh, and then we can use solar. Solar cannot be more than twenty percent, uh, except uh, in the future we might have energy storage facilities, and that's not yet ready now in the big scale. So we, we cannot do that. And what else we have? We can have. Uh, um, um, uh, bioenergy from, from mainly waste material. So this is a big thing that my ministries uh, and my colleagues in the ministry would like to, to venture into in the future. So if you can get another 30% into the energy mix through a waste sector, so that will be reduce our dependency. But the question is, we have to redevelop the whole thing. We have to renegotiate the whole um, financial model and whatnot. So the implication might be uh, more expensive in terms of energy tariff, electricity tariff, and water tariff. And there is no, uh, say for example, less subsidy for, for uh, fossil fuel based um, materials. So this is the impact that we have to think whether our people are ready to accept that or not. The largest contributor is from the energy sector, making up over 79%, followed by the industrial and waste sector, both at 8.6%, and the agricultural sector at 3.4%.